How are you, James? You good? Hey, good. How are you doing, man? I'm okay. Um, well, yeah, I guess I try to approach these things with, you know, curiosity instead of, mm -hmm. like, I don't know, acting like I know everything, because obviously I don't, but I've been watching your videos for a while, and um, so originally, you know, I, I'm in Minnesota, so I'm in the uh, U.S., but mm -hmm. um, kind of grew up with a Christian background and kind of never really understood the whole church thing and stuff, and then went through a pay went through a phase of going to church and thought I had found like the truth and stuff. And then a while back I had ordered a uh, Quran and a Bible on the internet, like free at the same time <clears throat> and made the joke, like whichever one came first is the one that is the religion that I would follow. I didn't know anything okay. about Islam other than, you know, like Fox news and stuff like that. Where but, did you order from? Um, so it ended up being OMF. One Message okay. Foundation, okay. which is funny. Um, okay. I, I've never heard of it before then, but it was like maybe nine months later, I randomly got a Quran in the mail, and I was okay. I had totally <laughs> forgotten about it. So it was kind of funny. And then, you know, I just kind of kept it. Oh, your audio changed. It was it was very good. What happened? Is is it uh, disconnected or something? Yeah, now it's better. Yeah. All it right, was, sorry it, about that. It was very clear, and then it was not very clear. So all of a sudden. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, it's so, okay. It's okay. So, so, so you never got the Bible. So you're saying nine months later. Never got, got the, the Bible. Never got no, the no, Bible. No, no, but I need, I need to speak to the One Message Foundation. It's not good. Nine months later, you get the Quran. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm not trying to expose <laughs> anyone. No, 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 no. You should get much sooner, man. That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they're free, so okay. I can't complain, man. I can't complain. So, okay. so anyways, um, mm -hmm. a while after that, I just kind of kept it on the shelf. And mm -hmm. I get a call from a random number, and I didn't know why, but I decided to answer it. And it was this woman working for OMF who asked okay. me if I wanted to learn about Islam. And I don't know okay. why, but I ended up having like an hour and a half long conversation with her about it. Mm -hmm. And that was a while ago. And so, you know, I guess it could be a, a, a case of like Allah guiding me toward Islam. But okay. um, I've like never really told a story to anyone. But um, mm -hmm. anyway, so I've been learning about Islam for a while. Um, I haven't read a whole lot of the Quran. I guess I'm kind of guilty of that more so watching like Dawah instead of reading the Quran, which is probably something I'm guilty about. But I guess I've been meaning to hop on to talk to you um, about mm -hmm. a few questions I had, um, mm -hmm. if you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead. Of course. Um, I guess one, like, one thing I grapple with is if God created, obviously God is all-knowing, and if mm -hmm. God created creation with the knowledge that evil acts would be done as a result of giving them free will, then how is God not responsible for those evil things? Because they're choosing to do them. I, I I understand that argument. I do, but it's but not an argument. It's not an argument, really. But I always found that this is the this is the case. So this is something that that uh, some people find problematic and some people don't find problematic. This idea of like, do you get the point? The idea of free will, uh, if you want to call it free will, uh, even though we don't believe in free will, but the will to choose, basically, you, right? You actually, have a choice in what you do because there is no absolute free will. You didn't choose where, which body you're gonna be born, which language you're gonna speak. All of these things are determined in a way. But the thing is this, as Muslims, as I said to you, look, there's two types of people who grapple with this. Some people who find it very problematic, some people who completely understand it straight away. And I always find it with the people who don't understand it, they never get it. And there's no, not enough rationality you can give them for them to understand this point. Uh, therefore, this is something that those people in the end have to accept. Mm -hmm. Because the fact is, this is not a foundation of any of the religion. Because this concept you can grapple with in any religion that you want to believe in. Mm -hmm. If there is a creator, the creator has to be all-knowing, has to be all-powerful, and then Therefore, he knows what's happening. He knows the future. He knows the past. So right. It's, it's not something that, that is Muslim specific or Christian specific. That's why you will find Calvinists in, in, the, in, the Greek, in the Christian tradition who believe one thing. And then you'll find three schools of thought there. You find three, three schools of thought in philosophy, people who are determinist, people who are completely free will, libertarian, people in the middle who are compatibilist. You'll find these schools of thought really in any tradition or any religion, I would say. Is that the uh, case in Islam with the different, is it Akita? Is that the right term? Is is there different or is there one, you know, idea of um, free will that is acceptable okay. in the faith? Y yeah. So, no, there is one true idea that is, that is accepted, but there are heretic groups. But they were mostly early, early on Islam, but there's still some her her heretics who believe heretic beliefs. So in Islam, if you read the Quran, it's, it's quite simple that the, the, the servant of God or the person has a choice that he makes. And in the same time, God knows everything. He knows the future and, and everything is under Allah's will. 
These two things are explicitly mentioned in the Quran. Mm-hmm. There, there is a, compa- a, a compatibilistic position in, uh, to understand these verses. If, if you take one and leave the other, then you're rejecting clear-cut verses of the Quran, which, which is a heretic position by default. So there was early groups that, that tried to do that, and the companions of the Prophet, <laughs> uh, for example, completely uh, said we're free from these people. These people are not even Muslims. Mm. Because they've de- they denied one of the articles of faith, which is Qadr. There are six articles of faith. You cannot deny any of them, or you're not even a Muslim. You have to believe in all of them. Mm. So, as I said, this idea of free, uh, as, as I said, free will and, and, and determinism, this idea of free will and determinism, it's, it's, a, it's usually a very binary thing, as I said. It's either it's very easy for people to understand and, and, and comprehend, or it is difficult, in which then they would have to submit to, to the concept mm-hmm. without getting a, a specific rational explanation that give it to me. But as I said, it is just based on whether religion is true or not. Right. Religion so, is true because right. God's, yeah, God's existence is absolute. But even, this is what I'm saying, even atheists have to grapple with this concept, you know? Mm-hmm, <laughs> so right. you, whether you're religious or not, right? So you'll get, you'll get p- people like Sam Harris, like he will try to claim that everything is de- deter- determined, while you'll have other people who will say, no, you have free will. Because even if they don't believe in God, they still believe in causality. And, and if there is causality, then things are determined materialistically, if you don't believe in the unseen. So I, either way, you believe in the unseen, you don't believe in the unseen, you're Christian, you're atheist, you're Jew. Whatever you are, <laughs> this concept is really is something you cannot escape. Mm-hmm. So it's not really a criticism towards Islam or a criticism towards any specific religion. Right. Uh, it's more of it just, just like a fundamental existential thing. Exactly. And I think it's easier to grapple with if you believe in God than if you don't believe in God. Absolutely. For, absolutely. For, for I, I, I would claim if you don't believe in God and you're a materialist, you're forced to believe that everything is determined. You have no choice. Right. If you claim that everything is not determined, you're just pretending. Because right. Because passion... Yeah, if it's just materi- materialism, then everything is a consequence of another thing. It's a co- it's causality. Where mm-hmm. you are today is a cause of where uh, you, you were before. But Muslims believe we're not just materialistic beings. It's a soul. And this is where the idea of choice comes in as well. It's not just a physical beings that cause and effect is, a, the, is what determines everything. Sorry, my cat's food just went off. So I kind of, on that, on that same note, um, the other thing I had here, I guess it's kind of like an extension of that, but with the idea of like evolution um is and i've heard some of your videos about evolution and you know i think the arguments against darwin are uh pretty compelling um but is there anything in the islamic faith regarding like obviously if you believe in the islamic tradition you believe that humans are created by law but Mm -hmm. is there in a sense of like guided evolution when it comes to like creatures changing over time even like people changing over time is that or is it more yeah, so a matter so, so, of everything is the way it is yeah so so there, there is a, like a long monologue of my channel you know where i went on for like almost two hours on evolution and like people are welcome to to watch that it's called muslims rationally and scientifically dismantle evolution where i go through like my personal position by the way because i'm not i i even say in that video that's not necessarily an islamic position but that's my personal position. I give reasons for why I hold that position. But when it comes to evolution, it's, it's not a black and white thing. And, and the problem is that a lot of people have not studied it. That's why they don't understand why it's not a black and white thing. So when you say evolution first, there's a difference between evolution and Darwinian evolution. Because there's different types of evolution. There's different theories of evolution. Uh, and, and some of these are adopted by, by some people in the scientific field today in the West among atheists. And some others are adopted by others. So they don't all agree on one theory or one understanding of evolution. Then you have like, for example, is it one origin? Is it multiple origins? Idea of gradualism? All of these things, they, they disagree amongst one another. On the beginning. Mm-hmm. So, but when people say evolution, just the word evolution, that things can evolve or mm-hmm. that things can adapt to their environments is not a problematic concept from an Islamic perspective. Got Our it. problem is when you claim, now specifically neo-Darwinism, right? When you claim that, you know what, all animals and, and humans have evolved from a single cell, a cell organism that they don't even know where it came from, you know? This is where, this is where, where we have a problem, you know? You have this magic custard that was like, you know, some, <laughs> some, some thunder happened and you know what? I, I, like this magic custard formed this, some, a cell and magically it became multiple cells and magically became a being that magically became a fish that magically started walking like, magically did all of that right so they have to believe in all of that magic to reach this idea and in, in, in which they believe today and uh, you've got people like richard dawkins who would say aliens plays the magic custard on earth because he knows <laughs> it's, it's like it's completely ridiculous to, to, mm-hmm. to accept that you know what a, a single cell came from nothing it's because those who really understand what a cell is composed of like when you understand that a cell is, is mainly made of proteins and proteins are mainly amino acids and it's like mm. a, in each protein you need that you have 100 amino acids and there are varieties of these amino acids and, you, and there is two types as well, left-handed and right-handed if you want to give a term for them. 
Do you need to have hundreds from uh, each together to, to make one protein? And then you need millions of proteins to create the, sing the singular smallest cell, which is a bacteria cell. So um, imagine it this way, like there is a bag, okay? <laughs> there is a bag and there is like, uh, there is an empty bag and there is two bags, blue balls and, and red balls, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you have to put a hundred red balls uh, in that bag to form one protein. And then you need a million bags or over millions, actually, it's actually millions of bags. And you have to do all of this process continuously, either put red or black balls continuously for a million times in each bag, randomly without, without any influences. And the more time there is, the more, the more bad it is actually, because these amino acids are quite unstable. So the more time you have, the more these amino acids will become unstable in which you will not form you the protein that you're trying to form. Mm. So, so it's, it's like, all of this is like, as I said, it's just, they have to believe in this magic. They would rather believe in this magic custard than to believe in a creator. Like, yeah. Which is, which is a far more, like it's, I would say, rational position. It's really crazy to me because it's almost like how complex and amazing it is. It's almost evidence in and of itself of God to me. Absolutely, um, absolutely, it is. So, so our position is, is, is as simple as that. Like Muslims don't believe humans evolved from single cell or, uh, organism. They believe Adam was created directly by God. This is explicit in the Quranic text. Now to do with animals, did these animals adapt to their environments or not? Uh, this is something, there is no explicit thing in the Quran that talks about this. But again, I reject this idea of randomness. There's no such thing as random. And if you're an atheist materialist, you cannot claim randomness because they already mentioned everything is cause and effect. So, so for you to say randomness, it, you're, you're making up a concept that cannot exist in your world for you to, be, to begin with, you know? So <laughs> you cannot have randomness as an atheist to begin with. So, right. Uh, yeah, so I reject anything that has the word random in it. Uh, to do right. Process. And I, think I, I gotta go here, but I've got time for maybe one more quick question. But okay. um, one thing that I've been thinking a lot, and maybe this might be isolated to like a Christian um, like belief because of just how kind of shaky it all is, but what is there any sort of is there anything in the Quran or anything in the Hadith or, you know, any perspective, Islamic perspective on feeling doubt? Like, is feeling doubt a normal thing? Do you do you believe in humans generally with something, you know, such as, you know, pondering our own eternity? Um, or do you feel like Islam is such a, like a rational, logical kind of path and belief that it's kind of hard? And as you move further into it, you feel less doubt. About okay, these. so that's a good question. Actually, it's a great question because I, I, but I think a lot of people use the term doubt and, and they don't understand the term doubt. Like, I, I do think this is, is a problem. But some people, they might think something is a doubt where it's more of a question rather than a doubt. A doubt is where you're not sure whether this thing is right or wrong. A question is, is where you're, you don't understand the specific thing. You're curious about what does this specific thing mean. So a lot of Muslims, they, they message me and say, I have a doubt. And what they mean by that is they have a question. Huh? I, how do you explain a specific part of the Quran? How to, that's not a doubt. That is, that is like a, a question, uh, something that you've not fully understood. You do not know how to take it, how to perceive it. And then you want to ask that specific thing. That's fine. Like people can have these questions. It's completely fine for someone to have a question. Doubt is problematic when it comes to the essential beliefs. You cannot have a doubt about the essential things, like the, about God's existence. Prophet Muhammad being a messenger of God or the Quran being the word of God. That, that take, can take you out of Islam. If you're not sure whether the Prophet is a messenger or not, you're not a Muslim. You cannot be a Muslim without being sure that he's a messenger of God. You cannot be a Muslim without knowing the Quran is from God. You cannot be a Muslim without believing in God. So mm -hmm. having a question about it is different than to doubt whether he exists or he doesn't exist. But also certainty and doubt is like three levels. So the first one is like to believe it in your heart, which is from a theoretical point of view, from a rationality point of view, right? This is uh, the first level that you need to achieve is like you're convinced rationally that this is from God. Now, there's a second level, which is actually to see it to have certainty uh, by seeing that thing. And the third level is to actually experience it. So we have actual prophets of God who already had the first level, but they were asking for the second level. For example, Moses, where he said, Rabbi Arini Andur Ilaik, oh my Lord, I want to see you. So, so he wants to move. He already is communicating with God directly, speaking with God, actually speaking with God, right? But he, is, he wants to move to the next level where he sees actually the creator. And then Allah responds by that. You're not, able, you're not going to be able to bear it in this life, right? You're not able, your eyesight is not able to bear it. Also Abraham. He, he asked for something that he wanted the next level of certainty where, he, where God actually turns a, a bird from a clay into actual living bird and he sees it. After he cuts this, has this clay bird and puts a part in every mountain, it forms into a bird and it actually flies and he sees that with his own eyes. So that's the next level now where you're actually seeing these things. Uh, it's the next level of certainty. But the first level of certainty, which is to be sure, be convinced without a shadow of a doubt, 
that okay, the, the Quran is from Allah, that Allah is the creator and Prophet Muhammad is, is a messenger, you have to have it to be a Muslim. Got it. Well, I appreciate it, man. I'm going to try to hop on here another time. I've got some more questions, but I got to go. But I, I really no appreciate it, man. And thanks for no all the problem. videos and all the information you do. It's been no very problem. helpful for me on my no journey. Problem. So, My pleasure, man. Honestly. Uh, okay, I'll see you next time. See you, man. Bye-bye.